Hi, I'm Elspeth and I'm the manager of St Margaret's, which is a service for people, a residential service for people who are living with dementia. So people come to us when all of the supports at home have failed and when it's clear that they need a 24 hour care experience and, and that's what we're able to provide. And I was privileged in 1983, which wasn't yesterday, to uh, be part of the first service like that that opened in Williamwood in Glasgow. And that was to get rid of the medical model of care for dementia and to see people as people, not as an illness. Because before that, and I remember going with my great auntie Jean to a cottage hospital where these people with dementia, who were a wee bit do wally as they might have said then, were locked in rooms and often beside their bed with a, some sort of table in front of them so that they couldn't even move. And life was not good for people with dementia in the good old days, as people often remark upon them. But we set up a service, a residential model, that looked at the individual and not the illness. And that's what, even all these years later, we continue to do. We look at the individual. What does that person need to have a good and a full quality of life? And that's different for everybody because everybody's journey through dementia is different. I've worked in care on and off since 1981. Now, I know I don't look old enough, but I remember getting off the train to go to work in one of our services up in Nairn and going in and thinking, oh dear Lord, what am I doing here with all these old people? Because a bit like your daughter, you know, the expectation was I would go on to do other things. And I only went there because I wanted a gap year before I did my social work training. And I had just finished doing my church training at St Combs to be a deaconess. And I wanted to, because I was really young, I had to do a four-year course. So I took a year out, went and worked for the Board of Social Responsibility, as it was then, and then got on the train to Aberdeen and did my social work qualification. I then got on another train and went to Perth to be a parish deaconess. But something called me back into social care. So in 1988, I left there and I went to work in Morlich and Varich, which existed then in Churchill in Edinburgh, with old people. And everybody said, oh, is that no a really backward step? You're giving up an awful lot. I mean, you'll need to think about this. And my mother was horrified. I mean, she was horrified I worked for the church. She was horrified, even more horrified. She was even more horrified and wondered where she'd went wrong, that having got all these qualifications, I was going to work with old people. That was, that was not a good way of furthering your career in her, to her life's experience, which was in the NHS as a very highly qualified and skilled professional in midwifery, she couldn't understand it. And that's very much the attitude that your daughter experienced, that I have experienced, and that my staff currently experience. Oh, what are you doing that for? You could do so much better. Because working with old people is not seen as a very um, up there thing to do. And I think that's part of the struggle that we have. We don't value working with older people. So unless we value working with older people, we're not going to value the people who work with older people. So where did it all go horribly wrong? I don't like to disagree with anyone, but during COVID, people who worked in care homes were made to feel as if they were evil and bad and as if we had done something wrong. Because Jean Freeman stood up and said, we will make them pay. They will be accountable for all these people dying. Not that you couldn't die in hospital, but nobody was going to be accountable for that. The fact that we had no masks, no PPE and no way of looking after people appropriately, when having thought that I was running a really nice home from home for somebody, was then in the position of having to run the annex of an intensive care ward with no resources, was neither here nor there. And so staff got broken. They became very broken. And I think very much like you, I could become tearful about it because in that time, we lost some really good staff. We lost them not to other care providers, 
We lost them to retail because they went to work in the shops where they were better appreciated and where they were still key workers. So it didn't matter. And I think we underestimated the psychological trauma of working through that time for staff who gave their all. And then we underestimated the effect that that would have on recruitment. Because if you demonise a care sector, and older people's care was demonised, then it's very hard to buy that back. So we don't pay them enough, we demonise them, and then we blame them for anything that goes wrong. And then we expect people are going to say, oh good, when I'm looking at my career choices, there's where I'm going to go. I don't really think so. And you've got all the external pressures about, well, you could do so much better than that. So you have that global perfect storm that leads us to where we are in St Margaret's right now. You can get higher salaries working for the local authority doing exactly the same job. You can get higher salaries working for the NHS doing an equivalent role. There's certainly competition from other providers because they're all trying to dip into the same vanishingly small pool. So they're having to up their game. How are they upping their game? They're filling their homes full of self-funders. Now as a church, morally, we cannot say, unless you've got money, you're not coming in. But I can stand here and tell you the only way of making care financially viable is to only take people who have money. Because otherwise you're in the unenviable situation that we're in, which is permanently broke. Permanently not meeting the targets that we have for funding. Because if you take local authority funded people, you will be able to get half the amount that you can get from people who are paying their own way. But we can't do that because we are the church. And we shouldn't do it. We shouldn't encourage the two-tier system that exists. And sadly... The posh adverts that you see, come and live here. You can have your massages, your dug, and your wine with your meal. <laughs> Which even looks attractive to me, I must be honest, in the 60s. You know, um, it's only there if you can pay for it. So what about Jeannie for Govan Hill? Or Brigton? Or anywhere else? Or Pullman? Who's lived in a council who saw her days and she's just wanting a bit of care at the end? She can't afford that. She can't have that. She can have what we've got on offer, which is really good. People tell us they really value it. They come to us and we rescue people from nursing homes because they get a better quality of care. But that doesn't make any difference to the funders. And there's a common theme. The funders don't value quality. They value what they would consider to be best value, which is often cheapest and often not as good. And that's the sad reality that we've got. An NHS domestic advert for Fourth Valley Hospital was put up on our local um, <coughs> Braze Blether, which is a local Facebook group, and it was for 11 95 an hour. And I thought, I hope my lot are not looking at this. <laughs> Still sitting there praying, going, please let them miss it, you know. Because we've had housekeepers looking to go to other jobs in the health service, we've got carers who are moving on. One girl put in her resignation this week. She's going to an organisation called Home First. You'll have seen it advertised on the television. Don't bother with these residential homes, stay at home. We'll help you to stay at home. They don't say, and it'll cost you a fortune. It will but then they'll be able to pay their staff much better, give them more flexibility and a better um, outturn in the end for themselves. The sad truth is if you don't get the money in, you can't pay it out. And I live with that tension every day as a manager. I run a home that has a £1.3 million budget. If I never fed them ever again, if I never put the lights out on, if I never did a thousand other things, if I didn't heat the place, if I didn't do any of these things, I could probably save about £200,000. Most of the cost of St Margaret's and of any care home is staff. 
It has to be. But the labourer is definitely worthy of their hire as a good biblical principle. And as the church, we need to be clear about that, that we need to pay people for what they do. And we've heard about how much they are needed to have qualifications, to have skills, to have everything else. That is all a given. And like we've heard, we get people to that point and they say, well, I could get another £5,000 working here or wherever. The other reality is that we don't pay people for working weekends, we don't pay them for working after 8 o'clock at night, we don't pay them more for doing whatever else they're doing and we're a 24 hour service. So even if the pay difference appears to be only two or three pounds, in reality it's huge. Because we lost a senior member of staff recently to go and work at Strathcarran Hospice. Strathcarran Hospice are taking her on as an auxiliary and because of how the pay structure works she's getting 14 quid an hour which is roughly equivalent to what she was getting. However, she'll get time and a half after 8 o'clock, she'll get double time on a Sunday, she'll get time and a half on a Saturday, she'll get all of these things that will make her salary as an auxiliary the same as a senior care worker with us. Now she's not going for the money, she's going because that's where her heart lies. And her skills were phenomenal and we will miss them so much in end of life care. And that's what she really was passionate about and wanted to do and we wish her well. But the cold hard reality is that were it just on a salary basis alone, we could never have competed. And we never can. The other major issue we are having at the moment is the amount of money we are paying to agencies. It's a very common theme. And if only we were paying that and getting the high quality service that even five or ten years ago we got, I wouldn't mind so much. But the reality is that they are bringing in people who may have met a resident, I'm not saying they haven't met one, but they certainly don't know what to do with them and how to care for them in a high quality way. And we are facing the struggles with that. So you have the problem of recruitment for yourself, Recruitment from the agencies, which is getting in lower quality than ever before. And we have a good group of agency staff who work with us consistently. Why don't they come to us? One girl said to me, well, I can't afford to lose about £5,000 a year if I come and work with you. And to be honest, I wouldn't expect her to. Because what she's doing now suits her in a place that she loves, with people that she likes, but with the best will in the world, she can't sacrifice her family on the altar of coming to work for the Church of Scotland. And that's where we fairly consistently end up. And we've also had staff who have moved on to be nurses, who have moved on, and we celebrate that, because that's good. But there's also that bit that says to me, I'm 62, in five years' time I retire. Where, where are the people coming up behind me? They're not there. The dinosaurs like me who've done it for 35 years will stay to the end. That's how we're made. But where are the 19-year-olds who are coming in? Where are the 25, 35, 45-year-olds? who want a career in care and a structure that rewards them and values them for the skills and experience and talent that they have, it's not there. And unless it's there, when it comes your children and grandchildren's time to need care services, there won't be one that doesn't rely on you having your own money. And that's a sad reflection on a society, I think. And that's sadly where we have already got to in so many ways. But I certainly don't want to see that for the people that I love coming forward. And I think we need to fight for it now. Thank you.